Hello filmmakers, it's Carrie with Filmmaker Central and we've been talking Resolve 18.5. We did a video with just a handful of the newest features in it. There is so much to explore. I'm trying to figure out like how to break it down into usable chunks and I think I'm going to start with the edit page. There's a lot of things on the edit page that are really going to make my life easier that things I've been asking for since like 12.5. So let's dive in and take a deeper look at the new 18.5 edit page. Now, one of the things I mentioned in the first video is auto generated subtitles. And a few people asked, how does that actually work? So I'm going to tell you, we have our timeline sitting here. And once the whole video, the whole video is completely edited at this point, and I want to add subtitles that you can toggle off on your TV or, or whatever, that type of uh, subtitle. And we're going to go to timeline. We're going to go create subtitles from audio and maximum character length, uh, subtitle default, teletext, Netflix. I don't really know what the difference is of these yet. I haven't tried them. English is the only language right now and we're gonna hit create. Uh, this is real time. This is a MacBook Pro M1 Max. It's fully maxed out. See, I'm getting about 16 times analysis speed. So it's gonna take 40 seconds or so for this to run. Now, I hope they add some other languages in here. I don't know how multi-language subtitles work. We have family in uh, Crimea and basically they speak Ukrainian or Russian. And it'd be nice if we could put those subtitles in our other videos on Trail Traveler so that they could understand me because I don't speak Ukraine and they don't speak English. So that would be nice if they add other languages to this at some point. But right now it is what it is. Let's get back to watching here. It's got seven seconds left. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna add a subtitle track and it's going to be done. It, that's it. There's nothing left to do at this point. Now, let's go ahead and play it. Hello, filmmakers. It's Carrie with... Now, interesting thing here. When I did transcription in the first video, it spelled my name wrong. This time, it got it right. Now, is that because I corrected it the last time or because it sees it on the screen? I don't know. I'm just happy that it got it right. So, Filmmaker Central... And today, Blackmagic announced DaVinci Resolve, nine, no, not 19, 18.5. So you see it did a really good job of creating those. Now, we don't want those displayed on the screen when the average person is watching it, right? So what do we do? We're gonna go into our delivery page we're going to come down here to export subtitles, make sure it's turned on, and you have a separate file, embedded captions, or burned into video. If you do it as embedded captions, they're going to be on the screen. If you do them as burned into video, it's a subtitle track. Now, let's go over to the, the I did a little test file so you can see it here, and go to embed. I'll open this with VLC. It's a good option for this. Okay. Now we start playing it. There's no subtitles. We come up to subtitles, go to subtitle track. Track one is English. Central. And now when we play it. And today, Blackmagic announced. So you can see that they're baked in to the file, but they don't display unless someone has closed captioning turned on. So very cool. Make sure you just do the burn into video. Okay, let's get back to the edit page. And uh, let's go to, let's go to a different project here. Oh yeah, this will have a fun little clip in it. Okay, so we have this clip going up here. Okay, nothing super special. <clears throat> I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to slow it down. 
Yeah, we'll make it like 50%. Okay, nothing, nothing's crazy yet, but, and I'm just gonna say, add a speed point here, add a speed point here. Okay, pretty simple, right? Nothing new here, but when we go to right click, we go to retime curve, the default is now retime speed instead of retime frame because nobody uses retime frame and everybody uses retime speed. Since 12.5, I have asked for either this to be the default or something that we could set. So now I can just adjust my timing in here and do it exactly the way I've wanted to for ages. I don't know why this has been such a problem to get put in, but having this as the default now, thank you Blackmagic for listening. It only took you six years. Anyway, let's get back to some more stuff. Okay, another cool feature is timeline backups. So I'm gonna go up to my preferences. I'm gonna user. Project save and load, we have timeline backups. Perform backups every 30 minutes, hourly backups, back daily backups. Where are these backups gonna go? And load all timelines when opening projects. Now this is cool. This isn't just a project save. Because, let me explain the difference. I'm working on the timeline and I make a change or a handful of changes or 30 minutes worth of changes and I decide, dang it, you know what? This isn't going the direction I wanted to go. I want to go back to a previous version. I don't have it, right? I have to either try and undo or just undo stuff and, and try my best to go back. At least this way I can set a reasonable time to create a backup and then just go back to it when the time comes. So if I just find I've just gone down some rabbit hole and things aren't working right, I can go back in time 30 minutes at a chunk and go back to those backups. So that to me is really, really big. Now, once we have backups, let me show you how to restore them. We're gonna, I go over here to, uh, my timelines, and this is my uh, timeline 12, restore timeline backup, and I have my list of available backups that I can go to. So super handy for just kind of protecting yourself from going down too far down a course that you may not want to go, and you just don't have a clean way of going back because you didn't save a copy of it, or you didn't do a version, or you didn't copy the, the timeline. Sometimes this can be a big lifesaver. Now another one, I did mention this uh, previously, it's the ability, it's not really an edit page um, improvement because you can actually find this in multiple places, but I wanna bring it up anyway because to me it's super important. The ability to just save a frame huge. Instead of having to go through the whole color page process and, and doing all that, I want this frame right here. It's all color graded. I could have visual effects on top of it. I could have titles on top of it. I could have all those things. And instead of having to like do a compound clip, so all those things are together or whatever in the color page, I just, I'm just going to go up here to file, export, current frame is still, it's gonna save it as a JPEG or any of your other common formats. Give it a title, boom. You've just saved off a still at your timeline resolution. Couldn't be easier. Super, super handy. Another cool feature, and a lot of people have asked for this in the past, is the ability to stabilize multiple clips at one time. So here I've got multiple clicks, uh, clips selected and I'll just go to stabilize and you can see analyzing one of five clips. 
duh, right? I mean, again, it's something that seems very simple, and yet it's been a while since the stabilized feature has been in there, and now we can actually do more with it by batching a bunch of stuff, going having a drink, coming back, and it's all done instead of having to do them one at a time. Now, I don't use DaVinci Stabilizer, uh, just hardly ever. So this isn't a big deal for me, but for those who do, yeah, definitely a big win. Now, talking about new things that are available in the edit page, there are some new video transitions. Nothing, honestly, really nothing that I think I would ever use. There's just more glitchy things, Luma wipe, mosaics, a multi-circle wipe. It just... You know, if you like those kind of transitions, then, uh, you know, you may like some of these. Now, I don't know that I'm going to go through and do an in-depth dive on all the different transitions that are available. But, like I said, they're there. So, might as well take advantage of them or at least play with them and see if there's something that you're going to like. Now, I think one of the final things I'm going to mention up here in the upper right-hand corner, we've got Quick Export. So I don't have to actually go to the deliver page. I can just, oh, I want an H.264, I want an H.265 master. It's got all my codecs, I can double check everything. Boom, export, done. Super simple. Instead of having to go through the whole process. Now as long as you have, you know, presets in here, that's great. You know, there's just no ability to change options. But if you have it set up, it's just a faster way of getting that export done. So these are some of my favorite things on the edit page. Um, I will say it runs nice and smooth. Um, I have had a couple crashes. Um, and this seems to happen in every major version where you're doing something and you go over to the media pool and you open a folder, it just disappears and you have to relaunch Resolve. So there's that. But, um, you know, overall, just the editing experience and everything has worked really, really well. So that's kind of my edit page updates. I'll have more videos for you coming soon. So please like, share, subscribe. Really helps our algorithm to get out there and get noticed. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.